disciples get understanding. Okay? Because in the, as the disciples are having a discussion with him about the parables, they said to him, why do you speak them in parables? And Jesus answered, he said, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been granted. So if you are one of those disciples, the remnant, the bond servants of Christ, God will give you understanding. Why do people get, why do people not understand the word of God? Well, I'm going to tell you one of the important reasons that they don't. Think about when Jesus said to his disciples, he said, my teaching is not mine, but his who sent me. If anybody is willing to do his will, he will know of the teaching, whether it is of God or whether I speak for myself. John 7, 16 and 17. Somebody who is not willing to do God's word will be deceived and confused and not understand. This is what we talked about last week. If you are a disciple, you are that person filled with the love of God, driven by the Holy Spirit who indwells you, and you do the word of God. You don't just hear the word of God, you do it. This is what James said. James said, prove yourselves doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Because if you're hearing the word but not doing the word, you're deluded. And you don't have an understanding of God's purpose of his word. It's not so you can go out. You know, it says that, that knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. You know why? Because there are people who know scripture. But it never, it never builds up. It puffs up. And the goal of our instruction is, is love. love. Absolutely. Not Absolutely. Self, not self-edification. Absolutely. You come, we come together in the word. The purpose of this is not so you become a Bible scholar. The purpose of this is not so you can impress people with how much you know about the Scripture. The purpose of this is that you can be a doer of God's Word. Yes. Because that is that is the reason you are here on earth. And that's the tool we have, is the Word. That's the power. It is the tool. But you, you have to understand something. I mean, you know, why has God formed the church the way He has? Why has He put in a church? Apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to, to equip edify. the saints for the work of service so that we can do, so that we can fulfill the ministry that God has called us to. What is that ministry? I, I, I know I've shared this in the past, but it's like I've won, I've done a lot of pastor pastors' conferences and I was teaching pastors. And I would say to say to the pastors, you know, do you believe that God wants to bless you as much as he possibly can? And of course, well, let me ask you do, you, do you believe that God wants to bless you as much as he possibly can? Because the answer is no. If he wanted to bless you as much as he possibly could right this moment, you would drop dead of a heart attack, a bolt of lightning would come through the roof, or the North Koreans would attack and an A-bomb would land on your being, and you would go fizz straight to the throne of God. Paul said to live as Christ, to die as gain. The reason he has not taking you to be physically with him now is because he has purpose for you being here. And, and the purpose for you being here is not so that you somehow get perfected and worthy to get into the no. gates of heaven because the righteousness that you have is his. He has made you right, righteous by his atoning work on the cross. So the, the only reason you are here is to represent him to touch other lives, starting with the household of God. And with the household of God, we're supposed to be working together in unity to be a blessing to one another that we might be in the world those ambassadors for Christ, bringing the knowledge of Christ into every place. That's our purpose here. So, you know what? That should be a blessing to you. Being here is less of a blessing than being there. That's a fact, and it's a fact you should recognize, all right? After his resurrection, Jesus went and he walked, he walked through the wall. He's in the house with, with his disciples. Mm -hmm. And he said to them, these are my words, which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things which are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And it says, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. Luke 24, 44 to 45. God desires that we understand. 
Throughout Proverbs, it talks about how we should cry out, so how we should aspire, how we should seek these things, the knowledge of God, the wisdom that God only God can give, and the understanding that comes from God. Okay? We have to have that. We have to desire that. If you are one of you, be honest with yourself. It says, let a man examine himself. If, that woman too. If you're in a place where you're saying, well, I just don't understand, I just don't understand, make sure that in your heart you've looked and you have a willingness to do what the Word says. Because if you don't have that willingness to do, it's going to fuzzy up, it's going to fog your understanding. It's going to distort your understanding of God's Word. He has given you the Holy Spirit. The very power of God dwells within you. So cry out to Him. Because he will give you the power to do the things. He will never call you to do anything that he does not equip you to do. That was what we saw as the, the model of the ruler of the world. In, when Moses was sent into Egypt. Remember the Pharaoh had called the people of God to make, make bricks. But then refused to give them what they required to make them. They had to make bricks without straw. They had to get their own, yes. right? That's the ruler of the world. God doesn't do that. Whatever he calls you to do, he will equip you to do and empower you to do.